text 15-17. Yathayame avvikrita bhavas tathate vrikrite sa nana virya prithar bhuta virajam janiyantihi sannipatya samutpadya drishyante nugataiva prageva vidyamana tvan teshami sambhava evam bhavan buddhyanu me lakshanir grahayar gunair sannapitad gunagraha anabritvada vahirantaram nate sarvasya sarvatman atma vastuna the mahatattva the total material energy is undivided but because of the material modes of nature it appears to separate into earth water fire air and either because of the living energy jeeva bhuta these separated energies combine to make the cosmic manifestation visible but in fact before the creation of the cosmos the total energy is already present therefore the total material energy never actually enters the creation i will read once again mm-hmm. the mahat tattva the total material energy is undivided but because of the material modes of nature it appears to separate into earth water fire air and either because of the living energy these separated energies combine to make the cosmic manifestation visible okay but in fact before the creation of the cosmos the total energy is already present therefore the total material energy never actually enters the creation hmm but my mind is said that what the before cosmos cosmic energy what is what was present mm. is now and will be in the future also mm. this always absolute is there this energy so even after creating of this kind of material energy with this all panch tatva mm. anirva apala vayu vayu, yeah. vayu akash mm-hmm. even the combined to make the cosmic manifest one visible just to to see that we can see the something to feel mm-hmm. as a jeev tattva jeev is since long is there but when come in material energy then actually is separated is separate but the creation 
the all energy is also present before when the jeev mat tatva didn't come even before that so it is said this energy material energy is not able to change the mood of uh, spiritual energy doesn't matter how vast or how big or what type it is it is not possible ah uh, it is not possible for this material world to change something in his spiritual ideas or spiritual energy therefore the total material energy never actually enters the creation similarly although you are perceived by our senses because of your presence you cannot be perceived by the senses nor experienced by the mind or words avan manasa gochara with our senses we can perceive something but not everything for example we can use our eyes to see but not to test who is speaking this vasudev to krishna or deva to krishna this is i think sukhdev maharaj saying sukhdev vasudev is saying sorry ah uh, vasudev to krishna is saying vasudev ah okay So this is Krishna's father saying to Krishna. Yeah. You you understand? Okay. Consequently, you are beyond perception by the senses. Although in touch with the modes of material nature. you are unaffected by them you are the prime factor in everything the all pervading undivided super soul for you therefore there is no external or internal you never entered the womb of devaki rather you existed there already purport this same understanding is explained by the lord himself in bhagavad gita chapter 9 shlok number 4 maya tatam idam sarvam jagat avyakta murtina mat sthani sarva bhutani नाचहम तेस्वस्थिता बाय मी इन माई अन मैनिफेस्टेड फॉर्म दिस एंटायर यूनिवर्स इज परवेडेड ऑल बींग्स आर इन मी बट आई एम नॉट इन देम द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड इज नॉट perceivable through the gross material senses it is said that lord shri krishna's name fame past times etc cannot be understood by material senses only to one who is engaged in pure devotional service under proper guidance is he revealed as stated in brahma samhita 
प्रेमांजना प्रेमांजना श्रीता भक्ति विलोचन सत सदैव हृदय विलोकय वन कैन सी द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड गोविंद ऑलवेज विद इन वन सेल्फ एंड आउटसाइड वन सेल्फ if one has developed the transcendental loving attitude toward him thus for people in general he is not visible in the above mentioned verse from bhagavad gita therefore it is said that although he is all pervading everywhere present is not conceivable by the material senses but actually although we cannot see him everything is resting in him as discussed in the 7th chapter of bhagavad gita the entire material cosmic manifestation is only a combination of his two different energies the superior spiritual energy and the inferior material energy just as the sunshine is spread all over the universe the energy of the lord is spread all over the creation and everything is resting in that energy yet one should not conclude that because he is spread all over he has lost his personal existence to refute such arguments the lord says i am everywhere and everything is in me but still i am aloof for example a king heads a government which is but the manifestation of the king's energy the different governmental departments are nothing but the energies of the king and each department is resting on the king's power but still one cannot expect the king to be present in every department personally that is a crude example similarly all the manifestations that we see and everything that exists both in this material world and in the spiritual world are resting on the energy of the supreme personality of godhead the creation takes place by the diffusion of his different energies and as stated in the bhagavad gita he is everywhere present by his personal representation the diffusion of his different energy 
one may argue that the supreme personality of godhead who creates the whole cosmic manifestation simply by his glance cannot come within the womb of devaki the wife of vasudeva to eradicate this argument vasudeva said my dear lord it is not very wonderful that you appeared within the womb of devaki for the creation was also made in that way you were lying in the causal ocean as mahavishnu and by your breathing innumerable universes came into existence then you entered into each of the universes as garbhoda kashai vishnu then again you expanded yourself as shirokadash shirokadashai vishnu and entered into the heart of all living entities and entered even within the atoms therefore your entrance into the womb of devaki is understandable in the same way you appear to have entered but you are simultaneously all pervading we can understand your entrance and non entrance from material examples the total material energy remains intact even after being divided into 16 elements the material body is nothing but a combination of the five gross elements namely earth water fire air and ether whenever there is a material body it appears that such elements are newly created but actually the elements are always existing outside of the body similarly although you appear as a child in the womb of devaki you are also existing outside you are always in your abode but still you can simultaneously expand yourself into millions of forms one has to understand your appearance with great intelligence because the material energy is also emanating from you you are the original source of the material energy just as the sun is the source of the sunshine the sunshine cannot cover the sun globe 
nor can the material energy being an emanation from you cover you you appear to be in the three modes of material energy but actually the three modes of material energy cannot cover you this is understood by the highly intellectual philosophers in other words although you appear to be within the material energy you are never covered by it we hear from the vedic version that the supreme brahm exhibits his effulgence and therefore everything is illuminated we can understand from brahma samhita that the brahma jyoti or the brahm effulgence emanates from the body of the supreme lord and from the brahm effulgence all creations takes place it is further stated in the bhagavad gita that the lord is the support of the brahm effulgence originally is the root cause of everything but persons who are less intelligent think that when the supreme personality of godhead comes within this material world he accepts material qualities such conclusions are not mature but are made by the less intelligent text 18 आत्मनो दृश्य गुणेशु सन्नीति वैवस्यते अस्तव्यतिरेक तो बुध विनाद न चनीषित सम्यक्तमुपादीडर्स हिज विजिबल बॉडी विच इज ए प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द थ्री modes of nature to be independent of the soul is unaware of the basics of existence and therefore he is a rascal those who are learned have rejected his conclusion because one can understand through full discussion that with no basis in soul the visible body and senses would be in substantial nonetheless although his conclusion has been rejected a foolish person considers it a reality purport 
without the basic principles of soul the body cannot be produced so called scientists have tried in many ways to produce a living body in their chemical laboratories but no one has been able to do it because unless the spirit soul is present a body cannot be prepared from material elements since scientists are now in a mode of theories about the chemical compositions of the body we have challenged many scientists to make even a small egg the chemicals in eggs can be found very easily there is a white substance and a yellow substance covered by a shell and modern scientists should very easily be able to duplicate all this but even if they were to prepare such an egg and put it in an incubator this man made chemical egg would not produce a chicken the soul must be added because there is no question of a chemical combination for life those who think that life can exist without the soul have therefore been described here as abudha foolish rascals again there are those who reject the body regarding it as a insubstantial they are of the same category of fools one can neither reject the body nor accept it as substantial the substance is the supreme personality of godhead and both the body and the soul are energy of the supreme godhead as described by the lord himself in bhagavad gita chapter 7 shloka 4 and 5 bhumir apo nalar vayu kham mano buddhir eva cha kamkar itiyam me bhinn prakritir astada aparayam itastva anyam prakritir vidhi me param jeeva bhutam mahabaho yayedam धार्यते जगत अर्थ वाटर फायर एयर इधर माइंड इंटेलिजेंस एंड फॉल्स इगो ऑल टुगेदर दीज एट कंप्रोमाइज माई सेपरेटेड मटीरियल एनर्जीज बट बिसाइड्स 
this inferior nature o mighty arm arjuna there is a superior energy of mind which consists of all living entities who are struggling with material nature and are sustaining the universe the body therefore has a relationship with the supreme personality of godhead just as the soul does since both of them are energies of the lord neither of them is false because they come from the reality one who doesn't know this secret of life is described as abudha according to the vedic uh, vedic injunctions aitadatyam idam sarvam sarvam khalb idam brahma everything is the supreme brahma therefore both the body and the soul are brahma since matter and spirit emanate from brahma not knowing the conclusions of the vedas some people accept the material nature the material nature as substance and others accept the spirit soul as substance but actually brahma is the substance brahma is the cause of all causes the ingredients and the immediate cause of this manifested material world are brahma and we cannot make the ingredients of this world independent of brahma furthermore since the ingredients and the immediate cause of this material manifestations are brahma both of them are truth satya there is no validity to the exp- to the expression brahma satyam jagat mithya the world is not false gyanis reject this world and foolish persons accept this world as reality and in this way they are both misguided although the body is not as important as the soul we cannot say that it is false yet the body is temporary and only foolish materialistic persons who do not have full knowledge of the soul regard the temporary body as a reality and engage in decorating this body both of these pitfalls rejection of the body as false and acceptance of the body as all in all can be avoided when one is fully situated in krishna consciousness 
if we regard this world as false, we fall into the category of Asuras, who say that this world is unreal, with no foundation and no God in control. Asatyam, Apartishtam, Te Jagat, Sur Anishwaram. As described in the 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, this is the conclusions of demons. Text 19. Tvatto asya janmasthiti sanyaman bibho badantani had gunad vikriyat dvaishwari brahmani no virudyate Translation. Oh my Lord, learned Vedic scholars conclude that the creation, maintenance and annihilation of the entire cosmic manifestation are performed by you who are free from endeavor unaffected by the modes of material nature and changeless in your spiritual situation. There are no contradictions in you. Who are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Param Brahma? Because the three modes of material nature, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, are under your control. Everything takes place automatically. Purport. As stated in the Vedas, Natasikaryam Karanam Chavidite Natat Samas Chabaya Dikas Chat Drishate Parasya Saktir Vivideva Sruyate Sabhavaki Yanina Bala Kriyacha The Supreme Lord has nothing to do and no one is found. To be equal to or greater than him. For everything is done naturally and systematically by his multifarious energies. Creation, maintenance, and annihilations are all conducted personally by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And this is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Maya Dakshina Prakritir Shuyate Cha Characharam Yet ultimately the Lord does not need to do anything and therefore He is Nirvikara, changeless. Because everything is done under His direction. He is called Srishti Karta, the master of creation. Similarly, he is the master of annihilation. When a master sits in one place while his servants work in different duties, whatever the servants are doing is ultimately an activity of the master. Although he is doing nothing, 
न तस्य कार्यम कारणम च विद्यते द लॉर्ड्स पोटेंशीज आर सो न्यूमरस दैट एवरीथिंग इज नाइसली डन therefore he is naturally still and is not directly the doer of anything in this material world text 20 swatam tiloki sthite swamayaya vibharshi shuklam sklu varnam atmanah सर्गाय रक्त रजसो सर्गाय रक्त रजोसपृत कृष्ण च वर्ण तमसा जनाते माय लॉर्ड योर फॉर्म इज ट्रांसेंडेंटल टू द थ्री मटेरियल मोड्स येट फॉर द मेंटेनेंस ऑफ द थ्री वर्ल्ड्स you assume the white color of vishnu in goodness for creation which is surrounded by the quality of passion you appear reddish and at the end at the end when there is a need for annihilation which is surrounded by ignorance you appear blackish purport vasudeva prayed to the lord you are called shuklam shuklam or whiteness is the symbolic representation of the absolute truth because it is unaffected by the material qualities lord brahma is called <laughs> rakta or red because brahma represents the qualities of passion for creation darkness is entrusted to lord shiva because he annihilates the cosmos the creation annihilation and maintenance of this cosmic manifestations are conducted by your potencies yet you are always unaffected by those qualities as confirmed in the vedas harir hi nirguna sakshat the supreme personality of godhead is always free from all material qualities it is also said that the qualities of passion and ignorance are non existent in the persons of the supreme lord in this verse the three colors mentioned shukla rakta and krishna are not to be understood literally in terms of what we experience with our senses but rather as representatives of sattva guna rajo guna and tamo guna after all sometimes we see that a duck is white although it is in tamoguna the mode of ignorance 
illustrating the logic called Bakandanaya. The duck is such a fool that it runs after the testicles of a bull, thinking them to be a hanging fish that can be taken when it drops. Thus the duck is always in darkness. Vyasa Deva, however, the compiler of the Vedic literature is blackish. But this does not mean that he is in Tamaguna. Rather, he is in the highest position of Sattvaguna. Beyond the material modes of nature, Sometimes these colors, Shukla, Raktas, Tatha, Pitta, are used to designate the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras. Lord Shirogadakshai Vishnu is celebrated as possessing a blackish color. Lord Shiva is whitish and the Lord Brahma is reddish. But according to Srila Sanatana Goswami in the Vaishnava Toshini Tika, this exhibitions of colors is not what is referred to here. The real understanding of Shukla, Rakta and Krishna is as follows. The Lord is always transcendental but for the sake of creation he assumes the color Rakta as Lord Brahma. Again, sometimes the Lord becomes angry as he says in Bhagavad Gita, Tan aham duisataha krunan samsaresu naradaman shipamaya jasaram asudan Asuriswa Eva Yonishu. Those who are envious and mischievous, who are the lowest among men, are cast by me into the ocean of material existence, into various demonic species of life. To destroy the demons, the Lord becomes angry and therefore he assumes the form of Lord Shiva. In summary, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is always beyond the material qualities. And we should not be misled into thinking otherwise, simply because of sense perception. One must, must understand the position of Lord through the authorities or Mahajanas, as stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, Ita Chamsa 
कला पुमसाम कृष्णास्तु भगवान स्वयं टेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी वन तोमस्य लोकस्य विभोर रक्षुषु गृहवतीणोसी मामिखिलेश्वर राजन्य संज्ञा सुरकोटि प्रति राजन्य संज्ञा सुरकोटि यूथ पय निर्भय माना निश्चय से चमो माई लॉर्ड प्रोपराइटर ऑफ ऑल क्रिएशन यू हैव नाउ अपियर in my house desiring to protect this world i'm sure that you will kill all the armies that are moving all over the world under the leaderships of politicians who are dressed as kshatriya rulers but who are actually demons they must be killed by you for the protections of the innocent public proper krishna appears in this world for two purposes paritranaay sadhunam विनाशाय च दुष्कृता टू प्रोटेक्ट द इनोसेंट रिलीजियस डिवोटीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड टू एनहिलेट ऑल द अनएजुकेटेड अनकल्चर्ड असुराज हो अननेसेसरली बार्क लाइक डॉग्स एंड फाइट अमंग देम सेल्स फॉर पॉलिटिकल पावर It is said, "Kali kale nama rupe Krishna avatar." The Hare Krishna movement is also an incarnation of Krishna in the form of the holy name. Every one of us who is actually afraid of the Asuric rulers and politicians. must welcome this incarnation of krishna hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare then we will surely be protected from the harassment of asuric rulers at the present moment these rulers are so powerful that by hook or by crook they capture the highest posts in government and harass countless numbers of people on the plea of national security or some emergency then again one asura defeats another asura but the public continues to suffer therefore the entire world is in a precarious conditions and the only hope is his is this hare krishna movement lord narsimha deva appeared when prahlada was excessively harassed by his asuric father because of such asuric fathers that is the ruling political uh, that is the ruling politicians it is very difficult to press forward the hare krishna movement but because krishna has now appeared in his holy name through this movement we can hope that these asuric fathers will be annihilated and the kingdom of god established all over the world 
the entire world and now full of many asuras is the geese of politicians gurus sadhus yogis and incarnations and they are misleading the general public away from krishna consciousness which can offer true benefit to human society टेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी टू अयम तो संभयस्तव जन्म नौ गृह श्रुवाग्रजास्ते नवधीत सुरेश्वर सतेवतारम पुरुष समर्पित श्रुवा धुनेवा विसरती दुदायुध माय लॉर्ड ओ माय लॉर्ड lord of the demi gods after hearing the prophecy that you would take birth in our home and kill him this uncivilized kamsa killed so many of your elder brothers as soon as he hears from his lieutenants that you have appeared he will immediately come with the weapons to kill you kamsa has here been described as asabhya meaning uncivilized or most heinous because he killed the many children of his sister when he heard the prophecy that he would be killed by her eighth son this uncivilized man kamsa was immediately ready to kill his innocent sister on the occasion of her marriage an uncivilized man can do anything for the satisfaction of his senses he can kill children he can kill cows he can kill brahmanas he can kill old men he has no mercy for anyone according to the vedic civilization cows women children old men and brahmanas should be excused if they are at fault but asuras uncivilized men do not care about that at the present moment the killing of cows and the killing of children is going on unrestrictedly and therefore this civilization is not at all human and those who are conducting this condemned civilization are uncivilized asuras such uncivilized men are not in favor of the krishna consciousness movement as public officers they declare without hesitation that the chanting of the hare krishna movement is a nuisance although भगवद गीता क्लियरली सेज सतता कृतयंतो माम यतंता दिधावृता अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस वर्स इट इज द ड्यूटी ऑफ द महात्मा टू चैंट द हरे कृष्णा मंत्र 
and try to spread it all over the world to the best of their ability. Unfortunately, society is in such an uncivilized state that there are so-called Mahatmas who are prepared to kill cows and children and not stop and stop the Hare Krishna movement. Such uncivilized activities were actually demonstrated in opposition to the Hare Krishna movement's Bombay Center. Hare Krishna land as Kamsa was not expected to kill the beautiful child of Devaki and Vasudeva. The uncivilized society, although unhappy about the advancement of the Krishna consciousness movement, cannot be expected to stop it. Yet we yet we must face many difficulties in many different ways. Although Krishna cannot be killed, Vasudeva as the father of Krishna was trembling because in affection he thought that Kamsa would immediately come and kill his son. Similarly, although the Krishna consciousness movement and Krishna are not different and no asuras can check it, we are afraid that at any moment the asuras can stop this movement in any part of the world. Jai Jai Shri Radhe